what's going on everybody today i'm going to show you how to set up a counter-strike global offensive dedicated server on ubuntu now the last video i did we set this exact same server up on windows but the linux installation is a little bit weird at least in my opinion but i might be stupid i'm going to be using the same guide that we did for the windows video and that's this one right here from the valve website i got a link down in the description to here if you pretty much just go through this guide it's almost self-explanatory but with this linux version i've ran into a few issues so i'm kind of going to work through those with you here now the first place we're going to go is to download and install steam cmd with this link right here and i'll just kind of explain what we're going to be doing we're going to use the linux commands all of all of the commands for Windows and Linux are in here, so we're just going to be concerned with what's under the Linux headings. These two up here, the user add Steam and change directory, these you need to do no matter what other uh, way you're planning on doing this. Because your two choices are install from a repository or do it manually. We're actually going to be doing a little bit of mix of both of these because I have not been able to get this server to run just using one of these methods. I've had to do a combination of both. Now the safe way to do this is to go through the install from repository commands and then go into the manual commands. If you go through both of these back to back, it will work. But that's a little weird because you're doing two different ways of installing both at the same time. It'll work if you do both, but you don't really have to do all of that. So I'm going to show you how I do it. And it's kind of a hybrid between the two. I've never been able to get the server to actually start just using one of these methods though. So that's kind of why I'm making this video. So let's jump right in here with the uh, general commands here at the top. So if we switch over to our terminal, hopefully you've already got Ubuntu running, which by the way, this is Ubuntu server. These same commands and everything will work on desktop if you just do them in the terminal. If you know Linux, uh, you probably already know that. So just log into the machine. And we'll start putting the commands in. Now this first one, the user add dash m steam, we're going to have to put sudo in front of that. It's not going to accept it if we don't. Whoop. Sudo user add. I don't know what I typed in right there. And put in our password. So now we've added a user called Steam to our uh, Ubuntu machine. And we need to change our working directory to home Steam, which is a folder it just created for us. And if we do an ls command, we'll see we have no files or folders under there. Now the next command we're gonna do is we're gonna go right into installing from the repository. So if we do sudo apt get install Steam CMD, it's gonna download, it's gonna ask us if uh, we want to go ahead with 16 megabytes of additional space, and we do. And just let that do its thing and install. This is going to, the real difference between this one and um, the manually is it's going to install all the repositories and dependencies, not repository, the dependencies um, itself. Manually, you're kind of installing the dependencies um, one after another. And we'll agree to that. And by the way, you hit tab to hit OK on that last part you probably saw but that's this is almost the end of the repository section so if we type in I think we need to do sudo here as well um, ln s uh, user games steam cmd steam cmd and that's just creating a link the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna dive into a little bit of the manual configuration and the thing we want to do here is sudo dash iu steam this is the part that is going to make this work if we don't if we don't do this command then pretty much nothing is going to do what we want it to this is where i always get lost so after we're here we're going to do a make directory uh, the squiggly line forward slash steam and we're going to change our directory to that folder as well. So if we do an ls, we can see we're in the uh, Steam. <clears throat> well, you can't really see where you're at at all, but there's no files or folders. So if we do a change directory up one. This is where we just downloaded Steam CMD too. So let's change our directory back 
to the Steam folder. Okay, so at this point, you could do the uh, last uh, step there, the curl command. That would technically be completing the manual um, configuration. We're not going to do that. And actually what I just did in creating that folder is unnecessary. So we're going to go ahead and change directory up one. Make sure we're in our just regular Steam directory. So we should have a folder, Steam, if you did what I did and created it, which is useless, and our Steam CMD program. So we're just going to run Steam CMD at this point. Type in period forward slash Steam CMD. And that's going to download and update our Steam CMD program. Once that finishes, we're actually going to launch or log in and install the CSGO server. And once this completes, we'll be in the Steam CMD program itself. We can do login anonymous. And here is where we are done with the Steam CMD installation part of the tutorial. So we can just go back in our browser to the actual dedicated server instructions and we'll pick up here. Commands we're going to do from here is force underscore install underscore directory. And then it says full path to CSGO DS, which is home steam CSGO dash DS. Enter. And at this point we can do app underscore update 740 validate. And this is going to download the actual CSGO dedicated server. And it should be installing all of these server files to that directory we just typed in, which is home, steam, and a directory called csgo-ds. This so is also where it likes to mess up for me, because sometimes this server just installs to somewhere over the rainbow where I cannot find it. So we're going to see if this actually goes where we want it to or not. And this is going to take a while, about for me, about 15 to 30 minutes. So this is downloading about 17 gigs of data almost so i'll be back when it finishes and we'll hopefully get this thing going actually while this is downloading i'm going to kind of clarify something here so kind of the reason that this wasn't working every time i did it was let's see let's go back to the steam cmd the repository way just installs steam cmd and you run it as uh the user you're logged in as and then once you install the CSGO server and try to run it, it's looking, because you installed it under the Steam user folder, but you're running it as the user you're logged in as, it's looking for files that are under your user that are not there because you installed them under a file for a different user. And the reason that the full manual way doesn't work is that it doesn't install all the dependencies. If you try to start the server, It'll just say restarting, restarting, restarting. The dependencies don't exist. So all of the dependencies that you need to start this comes from the repository install. But all of the user permissions and logging in actually as Steam comes from the manual section. Which is why you kind of got to do both of them together. You can't just do one or the other because each of them have different issues that come up if you just do one way. So the way that I do it is I do the repository section, which you just saw me do. And then I use the switching to the user Steam from the manual section so that we can actually um, have the, all of the dependencies we need and be running it from the correct location. And a very important command after that is the one that we just did to install the server is this force install directory. For some reason, sometimes if I either forget to do that or if I exit out of Steam CMD and go back in and I don't put this command back in there, it'll download the entire server, all the files and everything, but there will be no CSGO-DS folder. And I don't know where it installed all those files to, but you can't run the server if you can't find the folder with the SRCDS uh, files, which I'll show you here in a second once it's done downloading. Okay, so it just finished downloading. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to type exit into this uh, Steam CMD command prompt. And we should still have our dollar sign. And if we do a quick ls list command, we'll see that we have a directory called csgo-ds now. And if we do a change directory, cd period forward slash csgo-ds, and do another ls, 
we can see all of these files that we just downloaded. These are the ones we want to see is the SRCDS files. Those are what are used to launch the server. So as long as we're in this directory with those files, we can run the server. Now I'm going to go back to the guide here. And the next step says is registering a game server login token. I'm not going to show you how to actually do this. There's a link right here, which will take you to Steam. If you log into your Steam account, you can generate these login tokens and they're used as an additional parameter to starting your server. And what these login tokens do is they allow you to run the server publicly. So this first line here, it says, if you don't use a login token, it's only going to allow clients to connect from a private IP range. So you can only use the server on a LAN if you don't have your login server token. And it's tied to your Steam account. It lets you run the server logged in to your Steam, allows it to be public, and it doesn't take up a Steam login slot. You can still log in and play the game from your same Steam account. And then the next step here is actually starting the server. Now, if you're wanting to run this publicly and you're going to be using the login token, there's some information about which ports to forward on this link here, which actually, if I remember correctly, this isn't a full list of the ports you need to actually connect. I think when I only used these ports, someone couldn't actually connect to my server. There was one more port that's missing here. And I'll put a complete list of the ports you need to forward in the description, and I'll pop it up here at the end of the video or something. But actually getting the server to start, and I'm crossing my fingers hoping this works, because sometimes it just doesn't. We're going to copy and paste whichever line here we want, and it's for whatever game mode we want to play. So we got casual, competitive, arms race, demolition, deathmatch. Just copy and paste one of these. And since we're on Linux, we're only going to copy back to the dash game, because this SRCDS command at the beginning is for Windows, and it says up here, note, for Linux, use period forward slash SRCDS underscore run instead of SRCDS. So we're only going to copy back to the dash game. And over on our Linux machine, if we type in period forward slash SRCDS underscore run, and then paste the rest of what we just copied and hit enter, we should be starting up our Counter-Strike server. And at this point, if you see server is restarting in 10 seconds over and over and over it has to do with a dependency try reinstalling it from the repository or try installing the repository section and then going through all of the manual section as well that's something i always or something that i usually ran into when i would try only to do the manual section and if you get a error that's like no SRCDS, no file found or something, you're probably not in the right directory. So go to your home steam csgo-ds directory with the change directory command. So at this point our server is running. And one thing I like to do here is change the host name, which is if you just type in host name, space, and then whatever you want to call it, we're going to call this test server one. And something else good to do is note the IP address of your server if you don't know it. The command to do that would be ifconfig, and then see what the IP address of this uh, server is if you're running it locally and connecting to it locally. I'm not going to put that in because we're in the uh, actual server console right now, so that's not going to do anything. And at this point, I'm going to boot up Counter-Strike, and we're going to connect to the server. Okay, so now we're in Counter-Strike. If we go up to play, uh, browse community servers, then we should see ours pop up. Maybe. I actually don't know if it shows up in the uh, actual internet listing if you don't have the server login token um, in your startup command. I don't think it does. If we search through here, test, yeah, it doesn't show up. So what we need to do is go into favorites, add a server, and we're gonna add it by IP. So the IP of my server is 10.88.88.180. Add this address to favorites, and we can see the names test server one, what we type in as the host name. And then we should just be able to connect to this. Come on, refresh maybe. There we go. And we can see in the background there our console's going a little nuts because we got a got a player logging in. All right, and we are in the server. That's how you set up a dedicated Counter-Strike server.
Now, if you want to play this online, like I said, you need to use the game server login token, generate that. And you'll also need to port forward to your server. So I'm just going to go ahead and back out of here. We've proved that the server works. All right, so following the link down here under starting the server section, to the SRCDS page says you need to forward these ports. And this, this is not the complete list that I used. I forwarded these ports for mine and somebody couldn't connect to the server. So there is one port here missing that screwed it up for me at least. And that's 51,840 UDP. Now that's supposed to be an outgoing port just like um, this 27005 is supposed to be an outgoing only port, but I don't, I don't think it actually is just an outgoing port. So I forward all of them, forward all of these plus 51,840. And I'm putting those ports down in the description in case you need to port forward them for internet access. And I've got one more thing I wanted to show you here. And I'm just going to show you where all the config files are so you can customize your server. So if we're under Steam right now, we do an ls, uh, change directory into the csgo-ds uh, directory, do another ls. Mm, I don't think it took that. Oh, I had a space in there. There we go. Do an ls now. So the csgo folder is where we want to go. Do another change directory into the csgo folder. Do another ls. And we should, set, we should have some config files here. So, um, let's see, where's the server one? It's the one I wanted to point out. Oh, game modes. Game modes underscore server text out example. If you rename that to game mode server uh, dot text, then you can actually put configs in there and have it grab that. These are important ones for server configuration. Also, you got your map cycle and your map list dot text. So those are configurations for which maps you want to be in whatever list and whatever cycle and the directory we want to go into is the cfg one next so change directory cfg here's all the actual configuration files for your different game modes for your should be for your different uh maps as well uh i don't actually see the map ones in here but this is where the majority of your configuration files are going to be now i haven't really got to far into customization of a server. So if you know how to customize a server, this is the location for you to do it in. And if you want to edit any of these files, you just do a sudo nano and whatever the name of the file is. So we'll do game mode underscore custom dot CFG. And we'll have to put in our password. And here is the file we can make any changes we want, like the buy time, the buy anywhere, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and you just change the um, numerical value off to the side to customize it. So, like if we change this to one, I'm sure we enabled the cash player killed enemy default. Whatever that does, I don't know what that does, but that's how we edit it. And then you do a Control X, and if you want to save your changes, you press Y. If you don't want to, you press N. So we'll save that change. Press Enter. Overwrite the file. We've made a custom configuration on our server. So that's how you do that. That's also how you set up a Counter-Strike server on Ubuntu. So hopefully, hopefully this worked for you. If it didn't, ask a question in the comments. I'll get back to you if I know the answer. I am not a Counter-Strike server expert or anything like that. I just know how to get one running. And yeah. Hopefully it worked for you and hope you have a good day. Happy Counter-Strike going.